I was being called fat phobic for telling people that in publications you don't need to label me a fat rapper. No other sense in life would you walk up to someone and be like, you're a fat lawyer or you're a fat doctor or blah, blah, blah. Like why? you would never in your life do that. Period. I'm really excited today because I'll be talking to Chica. She's a 22-year-old rapper from Alabama. I want to talk about race. I want to talk about ethnicity. I want to talk about identity. I want to talk about size. So let's get into it. We're in Brooklyn today with ID, talking to the iconic Chica. I'm so excited to talk to her. She's an incredible, incredible. Incraceable. I mean, honestly, let's make it Let's bring Incraceable. Incraceable. Is that an incraceable? No, I'm li- like, yeah, with we're going to take that. We're taking it. Okay. We're branding it. Okay. TM. I mean, I, I would just like to say straight to you, like, how honored I am to have to say with you when I was talking about who I wanted to talk to. When I first saw you pop up and I was like, I need to learn more about this girl. I saw that you grew up in Montgomery. Like, that is a super <laughs> charged yeah. area. You know, there is some polarizing ideas around identity, mm-hmm. about wealth. I'm sure you saw, like, real... You know, real stuff, like yeah. real shit. With my career and trying to, you know, get out of that, I think that was a very big driving force behind it because I, being first generation, saw things very differently. Like my parents aren't from here. But on top of that, where I am from, this would never be a problem. I feel like anyone who's made it out of Montgomery is literally a rose who grew from concrete mm-hmm. because there was no way that we were supposed to ever. Like we were never meant to make it out of there. Given like a platform and how you really Put your work out there and especially having history of growing up being born and raised in montgomery alabama like Mo- alabama at the moment on the american on u.s politics is like okay. at the forefront <laughs> yeah. and i know you wrote that really really powerful freestyle around the anti-abortion bill you know what was that like for you and like why was that so important to you it felt almost like an obligation in the best mm-hmm. way it was it didn't feel like a burden i felt like there's so many people who don't have the opportunity to speak on, and I don't think that's fair. And so with the moment on Kimmel, me being able to write that freestyle, it felt like it was so important. It felt like I needed to do it. it it's called Richie versus Alabama because her name is, her last name is Richie. Like I, that was for us. Like that was for the people that I know exist like her, like whose stories have been told. Like she's literally working on a film right now about her abortion story in Alabama and like how it was like, a triggering thing, but also something that was so like life-changing and beautiful for her as well. And like in terms of even doing the Kimmel performance, her name's LJ, I went to her for like, what is overstepping? Like, this is not a, a, an experience I've had. I'm not there yet. Like, what do you, what are we talking about? Like, what do you want me? How do you want me to address this? How can I and be so, a vessel? Exactly. <laughs> if anything, I'm just that for the people. Like, I'm <laughs> trying to be people's champ. Like, I really want to feel like I am speaking for the underdog. And in that situation, that's a story that people will speak so much on and create bills on and laws about, but they know nothing of what they're talking about. Also, another thing in Alabama, and from an object- objective standpoint, mm-hmm. like how we're seeing exactly how this bill truly affects the people of, mm-hmm. of Alabama. I mean, if you can speak, expound more on it, especially speaking to like your best friend's experience, but it really, that bill really affects poor black women. Yeah. The most. Yeah. You know? But poor people in general. In general, but like in that's general. the way that the, that's the way the South has always worked is to make it a race thing when in actually when in actuality it's always been a class thing. People, there's people who are racist in Alabama who don't understand that they have more in common with the minorities than they do with the people they side with, and they're not siding with their best interests because they think that white is the end all be all. Therefore, this is what I need to be like. Yeah. We hate those black people, blah, blah, blah. Always on welfare, blah, blah, blah. But like, y'all are in the same situation. Mm. And so when it comes down to like the abortion bill, there's just so, I can't even, yes, it affects like black women a lot, but I can't even, like I think for the most part, the white women who it affects, most of them know if they're liberal, they all know. But the ones who are like, yeah, no, we don't care. They don't understand like what it means for them either. They don't understand that it completely takes away a woman's autonomy over her own body. It's men making a decision on how you should use your body. And on top of that, it's not like the men or the man who impregnates you is going to have any kind of law saying that he has to be there mm-hmm. to take care of the child. It takes two people to create a child. Why is it that we're penalizing women for how their bodies work when we don't impregnate ourselves? Like, you know what I mean? It, it's so sad to just see how women in Alabama feel like they are voiceless. Like, they just do. People in Alabama feel voiceless over this situation.
I mean, I was introduced to your work through first your Kanye video, which mm-hmm. I know that you've talked about a lot, but it was super powerful to me. I feel like, ooh, especially with the Kanye verse, the reason it came so like rapidly and like immediate, like it was one of the quickest verses I've ever written, right. simply because like there was so much emotion behind it. Right. Betrayal is the perfect word to sum it up because even apart from it being Kanye, so often we gain attachments to like people that we really like and people who are in the public eye who we feel like stand up for us. Like you said in my wonderful intro, there's so much that we identify with each other on. And so when you see someone who you identify with go from one extreme to the vast opposite in such a quick time, it's crazy. It's like crazy. It's, and it feels so like you feel naked and alone and you feel exposed like no one is really on my side. And I felt like someone needed to say something about it. And I mean, I'm a rapper, so I might as well. But like, yeah, no. And music, I mean, of course, historically has always been a tool for us to, you know, talk about our oppression, talk about things that make us feel certain ways, make, talk about things that like play into our lives. And so in the same way, like to see Kanye, like you, the same things you've been talking about in order to like further the conversation about blackness, about X, Y, and Z, like for you to backtrack it that quickly in the blink of an eye for what? It was a very, very strange occurrence. Like I couldn't really wrap my head around it. And the only thing I knew to do was to like rebuttal. In reference to like beauty and stuff, and I'm always so curious Mm -hmm. and like was absolutely rocked Mm -hmm. when I saw your Calvin Klein ad and all, and then you did a spoken word piece. I would call that piece that you did more spoken spoken word. Yeah, spoken word poetry, Mm -hmm. which I was like literally like I think I post on my Instagram. I was like my hero. (laughs) Um, It was (laughs) just it was just beautiful. I mean, not just like I'm really curious what you think, but also just because I think it's important to represent like the nuances of identity, which you really spoke to. Like you're beautiful, you're black, you're visibly plus, you're intelligent. Thanks. You know, and I think that like how we're changing that, like now younger people can see that. What was that experience like doing the Calvin Klein ad? When it comes down to like the, the beauty standard around it, how I feel like it affected people, it ended up being so much bigger than I thought it would. I didn't, I wasn't prepared for, the love in the same way that I wasn't prepared for the hate. Because I'd been getting so much hate online about like being, I was being called fat phobic for telling people that in publications, you don't need to label me a fat rapper. There's no point in that. Like it's a little redundant because you you see me. And on top of that, it's rude. And no, another, no other sense in life would you walk up to someone and be like, you're a fat lawyer. Or you're a fat doctor, or blah, 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 blah. Like, why, you would never in your life do that. Period. So why is it that as a musician or as an artist, you're, you can call me like, oh, two fat black women. This is the actual tea that happened. He's going to be so happy I'm talking about him, giving him clap, whatever. It's like, two fat black women drop songs a day and we need to support them. Sir, sir, like, do you not? That word is triggering for me. So for you to just throw that onto me and then be like, oh, you're projecting and you're fat phobic, I had to write a song about it. I literally... Got into like the most form of expression. Yes, yeah, yes. Like after arguing for like two days straight online, and people being like, "Oh, you hate yourself and you hate fat people, and all we do is love you. Why don't you love us back?" I'm like, "What are you talking about? Like that's me loving fat people is me loving myself too. So are you telling me that I hate myself? That's weird. I'm visibly upset. I'm annoyed, and like I feel like I shouldn't have to talk so much about my outer shell. And people always ask me to. It's just so unnecessary to me. Really weird. Really weird. Like, yeah. why is it a brave act to exist yeah. in your body? Of course, posed against, like, the normative and stereo- the stereotype of body that we've been forced to digest, mm-hmm. which is obviously a thin, white, tall woman. Mm-hmm. There's literally a line in the song that goes, like, <laughs> yes, I'm a brat. Yes, I'm a self-hating bitch because I love being rich but don't want to be fat. Fuck a description. I'm too busy looking at stars like I want to be that. Like a regular woman who walks through the world with no weight on her back. Period. That's, and like I feel like the labels that people place on me as in brave, like that's more oppressive to me than existing in the world in my body. Because mm. it's underhanded. It's you. It's a backwards compliment. It's you saying that the standard is the standard and it should be the standard, but you are brave for existing as yourself. Mm. 
in order to normalize something, you don't draw attention to it. Yeah. And that's what we do so often in society. Like, and we, we put like a whole bunch of just drapes on ourselves. Like when a black woman does anything great, you're like, oh my God, like you're, for a black girl to be doing this, like you should be, why? Am I not capable? I know there's like other things that society's gonna put on me, but like, am I not capable? Let's normalize this. Like, yes, praise things that are worth being praised, but me existing in my body is not worth being praised to me. And so the term thick has been co-opted, the term like body positivity, all that, the movement has been co-opted. And like, there's people on one side who hate it and they're like, oh, like y'all are just, <sighs> it's a, ooh, it's a, uh, y'all are praising obesity. Oh, oh my God. My thing is validating something is not the same thing as praising it, one. Two, what's wrong with praising it? If you don't have a problem with it, and if there's nothing wrong with people, and you're also, like if not it doesn't judgmental, affect you. what is your problem? Like, oh my god, I I think about that so often because it's so unfair to live in a world where you feel like your body is standing in between everything because Ugh. it does. Waking up every day and picking yourself apart is not normal. Empathy as a practice. I'm a complete like, empath, and like I, yeah. it's weird to be in a world that that's not. A, yeah. So you hope. Come. In 30 years, you can look back at your life and that you inserted empathy into your music and your practice and what it looked like. If or... I'm going to be here for a culture and I'm going to cause a cultural shift, that is the one that I want it to be. I feel you. Like, there's nothing else, nothing else that I want to do. Like, I don't, I'm not here to make you love your body. Like, you know what I mean? Fuck it. Like, you're going to have to work on that yourself because we all have to work on that ourselves. And of course, along the way, I'm going to, you know, be like, yeah, you're doing good. Like, this is how you should feel. But that's not why I'm here. Like, I'm not here to be your fat token. I'm here to help you fix these things that we all put on ourselves. That's the stamp that I want to leave in the world. Thank you so much for sitting with us. It's been such, such, such an honor. I was so excited to talk to you. You're the coolest empath I've ever met. And I'm super excited for everything that's gonna happen for you. I'm excited too. This has been an amazing interview. You're really good at what you do. Real precise with it or whatever. Real handbringing it, you know. We're best friends now. Thank you, seriously. For real. Loved it.